This is the Unit 5 and 6 help video for the study guide. There's a few problems we're going to go over together and get you a little push in the right direction. Not every single problem will be recovered here. It says find the missing side using Sokotoa. So we're going to start by sweeping an angle. Now from that angle, you label the opposite, adjacent, and hypo. Opposite is across, adjacent is next to the angle, and of course the hypo is across the right angle. Now you analyze what you have and what you need. In this case, we have the adjacent, we need the hypo. That means we have an AH combo. But what goes with AH is pi. You write the equation out. Always write the original equation, not with the plug-ins. So sine theta over 1 equals adjacent over hypo. Take it from there. Your goal is to solve the unknown. Do not touch a calculator until the unknown is by yourself, by itself. Pause the video and do these two problems. In this case, you're going to be using inverse Sokotoa. So you start by sweeping the angle, and let's label the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypo. In this case, you are given all three sides. So if you're given all three sides, technically you could use any one of these, inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent, to solve for that angle. Pause the video and do both. So what's really important with the 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90, is to take the time and figure out what your tables are. So in 45, 45, 90, leg, 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 root, two. That's your table. And in 30, 60, 90, short leg, short leg, root three, short leg times two. So in a 45, 45, 90, the legs are equal. So if that's 10, that's 10. To get to the hypo, we times five, root two. And then whatever that is, we come over here, we find our short leg, which is right there. Short leg to long leg times root three. And you ask yourself, short leg to get to that hypo, whatever it is. We times by two. Pause the video, do this section. Number nine, find the measure of the angle indicated. Make sure you actually don't just solve for X. It actually wants the measure of this angle. Be very careful on a multiple choice test. Guaranteed for your multiple choice portion, your value of X will be there. And if you choose it, you will be wrong because the question doesn't ask for the measure of the variable. It asks for the measure of the angle after you find the variable. Go ahead and trace all four sides, four sided shapes, of course, some 360. Use that to solve for X and then actually answer the question you're being asked. Pause. Parallelogram, this takes you back to the 
O C D. So here we're dealing with angles. It specifically wants angle S. So these two deal with angles. First, opposite angles are congruent. So we know that angle V and T will be congruent and angle U and angle S will be congruent. Second thing is we know that consecutive angles are supplementary. Consecutive means next two angles. So if I stretch these out, their consecutive interior angles would be like angle U and angle T would be consecutive interior. They add up to 180. And of course, angle U and V are consecutive interior. They will also add up to 180. Once again, this problem doesn't just ask for X. You have to find something else after X. Pause the video. I saw Slee's trapezoid. Basic rule of thumb, if you have two equal sides, you have two equal angles. So we know that angle X and U must be equal. And angle W and angle V must be equal. But because these lines are parallel, stretch them out. Another thing that's true is that these consecutive interior angles, U and V and X and W also add up to 180 because of these parallel lines. Use that to solve for X. Once again, X is not your final answer. In each of these problems, we are given what's called the median. The median, which is the connector of the midpoint. says it wants you to find a certain segment that's supposed to be wider equation. We know that the median is the average of the two bases. Bases are the parallel sides. Notice I'm writing the equation before I do my plug-ins. I make my template. Now you can plug stuff in. My median. I circle it, circle it, plug it in. Circle the base, circle the base, plug it in. Circle, circle. Plug it in and make sure you don't drop the two there. You've got two proportions or a proportion to ratio. So, of course, you're going to cross multiply. Do not stop at X. Once again, you're looking for something beyond X. Make sure you actually answer the question that's being asked. For this section, the most important thing you can do is write down the equation that you're working with. For example, number 15 says find the missing measurement. These are all area concepts. How do I know they're all area? Because of that word, area. So you start by writing down the area equation of whatever shape is involved. And in this case, this is a trapezoid. I'm going to write it like this. Equations have two sides. 
with an equal sign. So I write the word area equals the average of the bases times the height. Notice I have an equation with an equal sign and two sides. Make sure you always have two sides to an equation. Circle plug chug. I circle the word area and looky there. I'm going to plug that in where it says area. I circle one base. I pick up one base. 12. Another base. There's your unknown question mark. Height. Height. Seven. You could do this one of two ways. Either you can distribute that seven just to the numerator, or you can divide out the seven both sides, then cross multiply and solve for the unknown. For all of these, equations have two sides with an equal sign. Make sure you write both sides, two sides with an equal sign. Equations have two sides with an equal sign. It says right here, find the interior angle sum for each polygon. We start by writing, see that word sum and interior, underline those two words. The sum of interior angles, sides minus 2 times 180. Obviously, the only thing you need here is your N, which is the number of sides. So just physically tick mark and count around until you figure out the N and plug it in. Let's find the measure of one interior angle. So each angle of a regular polygon, sum over sides, ain't this fun? So I write one interior is going to be sum over sides. Ain't this fun? You want a single interior angle. Remember, it's regular, so we only need one because it's congruent all the way around. Now we define the sum and its interior. So our one interior angle is n minus 2 times 180 over n. Of course, the first thing you need to do is walk around, count your tick marks there, figure out what is your N, and plug it in. Round your answer to the nearest tenths place. Pause the video. Do the work. Says find the area of the regular polygon. Round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. Okay, we take a look at what's here. So in 24, we are given, look at the difference here, be very careful from center to corner. This we've been given a radius. In 23, center to midpoint, this is the apothem. Notice they're not the same thing. And if we're finding the area, area of a regular polygon is perimeter times apothem over 2. 
So on 24, I'm going to draw in my apothem because I don't have it. This is something I'm going to need to get right there. I walk around my side, which would be my perimeter. I don't have that either. Obviously, I'm going to need to find the squiggle, if you will. Shade right here. That is a lovely right triangle. I'm going to need this side. I'm going to need the squiggle. And this is eight root three. You start by drawing in all your pizza slices, which are your radii to the corners. And you count your pizza slices at one, two, three, four, five, six. So of course, I find one pizza slice is 60, which makes that right there 30. You can use Sokotoa or 30, 60, 90. That's fine, but whatever you do, your final area is and round to the tenths place. For the next section, I recommend you go back in your reference booklet to Unit 6 and take a look at this page. You really want to keep it handy here. Okay, so find this in your reference booklet. And let's just recap. Translation. To slide. Add to the left. Add to the right. Reflection. To flip over the Y opposite the X. Reflection over the X axis. To flip over the X, you opposite the Y. Reflection over the origin, which is the same as rotating 180. To flip over the origin opposite both. Last, the rotations. To rotate 90 clockwise, you switch and flip to the right. To rotate 90 counterclockwise, you switch and flip to the left. Now with this page handy, you're going to go back to where you just were and do this section. The one I will do with you is I will do one of the rotations 90 because it is the trickiest. So number 27, we're going to rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. So one of the first things you should just make note is what direction are you going? So we are going counterclockwise. So we're going to take this shape and go this way, 90 degrees. Let's get our coordinates first. P is sitting at 3. is going to be at negative 3, positive 4. So let's put that right here. All right, so to rotate 90 counterclockwise, switch and flip to the left. So the first thing you do is you simply switch the order. So I'm going to go 4, negative 3, 1, negative 3, 3, negative 1. 
Then you counterclockwise, you draw clock counterclockwise zero, switch that sign. Counterclockwise zero, switch the sign. Counterclockwise zero, switch the sign. Graph all three points. This is going to be called P prime. X prime. M prime. Now it's hard to see that as a 90 degree rotation, so you choose any two matching points from the origin. So I'm going to go from the origin to M, just kind of sketch a line there. And from the origin to M prime, and look, there's your 90 degrees, and yes, we've gone counterclockwise. Do the same for 28. 29 and 30, you try to figure out what rotation, reflection, or translation is going on there. 